Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today back to working on my Lucas horizontal boring mill, and we've been in the process of uh, rebuilding the saddle uh, off of this machine and getting everything rescraped in and getting everything just like it needs to be. And in previous episode, what I have already done is we've already got uh, what is now the bottom of this, uh, the way it is right now. This is, this is actually upside down, so this will be the top. But uh, it has already been scraped in to this surface plate. Now I've got a three foot by six foot surface plate here in the shop. It's been calibrated. Uh, it's in really good shape. Um, very, very extremely flat surface. And using a process of bluing it up and transferring the blue to the, the, these, the tops of these ways over here, I have got those scraped down into a nice plane that has good uh, points of contact between the, the table and the part. In other words, it's flat. It's very, very flat. At least the peaks of all those scraped points on there are very flat, which is exactly what we want for a, uh, a machine surface like this. Now, the next step in this is that we've also got a couple of ways in here that are perpendicular to the ones on the, again, what's on the bottom of the plate right now, they're facing up. And these are what are actually ride on the main ways of the uh, horizontal boring mill. And my goal is, is I need to get these ways scraped in flat and also parallel to the table or parallel to the ways on the top here. So it needs to be, the, the, the surfaces of these two ways need to be in the same plane as the uh, table here and also needs to be flat across them and be scraped in for, you know, 15, 20 points per inch of contact is what kind of what I'm going for on this. So that's today's task. Uh, so, you know, the first one was fairly straightforward. We're just trying to make it flat, making something flat when you're scraping. I mean, I'm not going to say it's easy to do, but it's probably the simplest thing to do that you can do but here. You know, I can easily come in here and scrape these things flat, but if they're, you know, out of whack with, with the, the surface that it's uh, referencing, uh, it's kind of a moot point. So anyway, we're going to be showing you how we're going to do that. First thing I want to do is come in here and do a good inspection, kind of see where we're starting from, and that will give me a game plan uh, on where I need to go from there. So let's get in here and kind of show you what we're going to do. I've got you kind of looking down here on these uh, surfaces that we're going to be working on, which are these ways in here. Uh, these are just flat ways. They're going to be on box ways uh, on the machine over there. And this is uh, pretty much in the original shape, just like we've got it. There is a little bit of scoring in these uh, just from where trash and stuff has gotten in them. No big deal. Uh, some of that's going to scrape out and anything that's left in there will kind of serve as an oil groove. Uh, these circles here are uh, where the oil can get uh, spread across those ways. Uh, they basically got these holes on the ends and those are where the oil drops down. And we got this circular uh, milled out area in there just below the surface. Again, that gives a place for the oil to go and that just puts it all the way across that way. So when this way moves back and forth, it's uh, staying lubricated. Notice uh, that on one side over here is pretty much solid all the way across. On this side, we just kind of got a front and back pad. That's very typical. You see that on saddles all the time. A lot of times uh, when they're scraping them, it may be solid, but they'll kind of scrape out a low spot in the middle. And the idea here is, is that three points of contact is going to be more stable uh, than four. So with having the two pads here, you're always going to have two points, it's going to be touching on these two ends. And then, you know, theoretically you want to have contact all up and down this one over here. But if for some reason it wore where one end was higher or lower than the other, um, it would touch in one area and you'd have three points of contact and it would be a fairly stable surface. Uh, that's the, the theory there behind this. And that's why this is kind of a uh, notched out. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making some measurements. What I'm trying to do is figure where is the lowest point uh, on here. And I'm going to be making some assumptions that, you know, these are fairly flat. And according to just uh, a test I had done earlier uh, where I had just put a, a straight edge on there and hinged it, 
they are fairly flat. I mean, they're not perfect, obviously, but they are fairly flat. The question is, is, you know, how are they in relationship to the surface plate? We'll be using an indicator to do that. But before I do those measurements, I do want to take a uh, stone and just kind of go in there and um, make sure I don't have any burrs. Again, these are original surfaces and I can just tell by feeling through the stone that yes, there are some, some burrs in there, some high points. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of get those knocked down. So we'll do that on all these places. These are precision ground flat stones. These are also, they've been ground extremely flat. I can tell that over on this edge, it's a little bit high, but what that is, there's a little lip there uh, that's probably the way didn't doesn't go all the way there. So uh, I'm going to try to it kind of ignore that a little bit while I'm doing this. Let me go to the other side, get that side stoned. All right, that should knock down any burrs that might give me a, a bad reading while I'm doing this. Now that I've got these uh, stoned, I can come in here and get a pretty good idea of, of uh, the height of each one relative to the surface plate below. And that's going to tell me uh, if they are in, you know, in line now or whether we need to be adjusting the geometry on these. And I've already come in here with a straight edge and kind of hinged them. I know these are, uh, I mean, I know they're not perfect, but they're not terribly out of whack right now. But again, the question is, is one side higher than lower? compared to the surface plate. So we'll be using a, uh, uh, a, a height gauge here with an indicator on it. Uh, this is a, a tenths indicator. This is measuring 10 thousandths of an inch. And I'm gonna start by just putting it on the surface. And I want you to notice that when I move it across there, that needle is bouncing all over the place. I mean, it's probably bouncing three, four thousandths difference depending on where it's at. And what's going on is this is the scoring that's in here. You can see that scoring in there just from different pieces of trash and whatever they've got up underneath it. So even if I do this on a scrape surface with an indicator this accurate, uh, you're going to see it bounce around because between your highs and your lows and your scrape points, you're probably going to have, you know, close to a thousandths of an inch. So to get a better measurement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a, a gauge block on here. And this gauge block is a, a very accurate, it's been ground and lapped, it's parallel, we know that. And um, let's see, let me kind of get this down. But this is going to give me a much better reading uh, across the surface because what it's doing is, is it is, it is laying, it's kind of like a, a straight edge when we're scraping, it's laying right across the, uh, the highest points on there. And it's giving you a, a plane to measure off. And this is going to be, uh, very smooth from one end to the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero my, um, uh, my piece here and you can see when I swipe, swipe that now my indicator is not moving. I mean it might be moving just millionths of an inch but it's not moving much at all. So I've already done some um, preliminary measurements and I already know that this is the lowest uh, one on here. So I'm going to call this zero. I'm just going to put a zero right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go measure all four of uh, the corners on this and see where they are in relation to one another. I've set the height gauge here or the, the, the indicator. So when I take it off of here and I go to another one, I'm, I'm going to be measuring the exact same thing. The distance, the relative distance between uh, the surface plate and the surface with the gauge block on there. And basically this is now zero. So anything I measure will be the deviation from uh, this corner right here. Let's map it out, see where we're at. All right, first stop. I'm uh, just on the same side here, just uh, right down from it. I've got my gauge block on there. We're gonna ease in here with the indicator and sweep across. And uh, looks like we're uh, two thousandths and two tenths. And you know, I know you can see when I pick up on this, which way the needle's moving. 
So I know that once we get over that yellow side, uh, that's high. That's higher than the side we just measured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a measurement on here and I'm going to measure in ten thousandths of an inch. So this is 22 ten thousandths. It's two thousandths and two ten thousandths. So 0 0.0022 is what I'm measuring, but I'm just going to put a 22 on here. And again, that's 2.2 thousandths higher uh, than we were over there. And I'll put a plus on there. Let's go to the other side. We're going to flip around. I can just pick this up very carefully, put it back on the surface plate. And that height difference, again, we're just making measuring the relative difference. It will not change. And uh, we'll get a measurement over there. We're around the other side. This is uh, directly across from the side that measured zero, which was our reference. And uh, this one is uh, plus four thousandths. So uh, let me get a, a Sharpie over here. And we'll write up here 40. All right, last one here. Let's see where we're at on this one. And it looks like it's also plus 40 or four one thousandths. All right, we've got things kind of mapped out. And uh, this will kind of give me a starting point to know where I need to go, go to here. So I will just mention that once I've measured all four corners, I did come back to my original one that I started with and I just double checked. And because I was moving the indicator around a lot, having to pick it up off the plate to get it over to the side, I just wanted to confirm that nothing had moved. And yeah, I mean, I'm measuring within half of a 10,000th, 50 millionths of an inch of where I started. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. So game plan here, we're going to do some scraping and uh, I'm going to be starting out by really just trying to remove a lot of material and I'm really just trying to get all of my ends down to zero and then we'll worry about going for points of contact. Uh, it's going to involve removing in the world of scraping anyway, a fairly large amount of material. Yeah, four thousandths maximum distance here. It's not a lot. I mean, we're talking just a little over the thickness of a human hair. Uh, and most people would say that's, that's nothing. But for precision, we want to get it better than that. And we can get it better than that. So we're going to be doing uh, some step scraping to start things out, and uh, at least on this side. So basically, I, I really don't want to take this end down here any lower. We will scrape it for contact and everything else, but I really don't want to get it any lower. But this end's got to come down four thousandths of an inch. Now, I know from past experience, uh, when I make a pass scraping, you know, I'm probably dropping the total height if I do some pretty heavy scraping, maybe a couple of ten thousandths at a time, and we got to go. Let's, let's just say, let's just say, to make it easy, I'm going to say four ten thousandths per pass. That's probably a little bit heavier, but it's a good place to start. So if I got to go, if I'm taking four ten thousandths and I've got to drop it 40 ten thousandths, that means I need to make 10 passes to get everything done. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do a process called step scraping where we'll, you know, take a little bit off and a little bit off. So I'm going to kind of just say, okay, this is halfway. I'm just going to kind of divide these in half. Um, and this is a uh, very rough. So, you know, now we got four um, segments here. Now I've got eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide all these in half again. And I've got 16 steps in there. Um, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to scrape this side, and I'm going to start, I'm going to scrape in one direction, boom, 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 in this segment. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to scrape in the other direction from the end to this line. And then I'm going to scrape from the end to this line, end to this line, end to this line. So as we're going, the highest end of this is getting scraped every single time. But as we move down, each other little segment, it's not getting scraped as much. Uh, so, you know, on this end, it's going to get scraped 16 times. And on this end, it's going to, not going to get scraped at all. So that's a process called step scraping. And the whole idea here is, is we're just trying to drop this end down. We're trying to remove more material from this end and this end. And uh, we'll go. So just to be clear, this is going to probably take multiple times of doing this to get this worked out. We're just kind of going to start with uh, doing these 16 increments. And uh, we know we'll come measure it again and come up with a game plan again after that. I am going to be using the Biax Power Scraper. It's going to be, again, kind of difficult to get all the way into these corners. I'm going to have to do some hand scraping in there to do that. But uh, we're going to start with this. And we'll just scrape one way to the first line. And we'll scrape from the end to the second line, and to the third line, and so on and so on until we work our ways all the way down. Here we go. to the third line now. All right, we have took a good bit of metal out of there. And, but before I go over and try to re remeasure it, I do want to get a straight edge in here, blew it up, and try to get, you know, make sure we're at least in somewhat of a plane. Um, I can imagine that right now it's probably a mess. And I'm going to have to scrape it a couple times to just try to get uniform contact, uniform points of contact from one end to the other. Once we do that, we'll go back over and uh, recheck it on the plate. But let's get it in a plane first so that we're really making sure that we're measuring uh, what's real and not just measuring the ends and we don't know what's going on in between. All right, let me get a straight edge blued up and uh, let me get this stoned, cleaned up. I didn't get my shop vac. There's a bunch of... Uh, uh, cast iron dust down in these little holes here. Get all those out. We'll bring you back here in just a minute. Because we can't get the surface plate down inside the groove over here, I'm going to use a straight edge as uh, my reference surface. And this is a, it's a 36 inch straight edge. I'm using it. It only needs to be 24 inches for that uh, length, but this is the widest straight edge I've got on the bottom, which is going to fit in that slot a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to use. I have uh, checked the calibration on this. I just 
checked it over on the uh, surface plate. Uh, and this is one that I have personally uh, scraped in in the past and uh, I keep it in pretty good shape. I, try, I touch it up as needed. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of uh, blue on here, a little bit of dye or ink. Um, this will transfer from the straight edge uh, to the part we just scraped. And we should be able to see that blue mark and tell where the high spots are and tell what kind of area of contact we have in there. Let's uh, take it over there and do it. Let's see here, we'll drop that down in there. We're spanning all the way across. So the areas that transfer will be the high points. And uh, yeah, we're gonna need to do a little bit more work to that before we uh, go to measuring it. Not sure how much you're gonna be able to see with the glare on there, but um, here's what I'm seeing. First off, I'm actually seeing fairly good contact from almost end to end on from about here over. It's, we're dropping off on the end there, we're dropping off on the end, it tells me it's kind of high in the middle. We got a lot of points of contact in here, not so much in the center here. And we kind of pick up again on the edge over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scraper, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna hit all these blue spots really, really hard, and I'm gonna take several cycles until I'm getting points of contact from end to end fairly uniformly in there. This is not gonna be a finished scrape by any means but uh, I just wanna make sure that we're in a good plane and the areas that we're measuring that we both have uh, points of contact in uh, these areas. That's gonna be the most critical thing. All right, uh, let me get the scraper out and go to work. All right, that's better. All right, so we've made several passes across here and uh, this is kind of where I want to be at right now. This is by no means a finished scrape job at all, uh, but I'm picking up area of blue from one end to the other. It's a little bit light on the ends, but I am picking up blue in here, which is that area that I'm measuring in and same on the other side. In fact, let me just kind of roll you down through there to kind of show you what it looks like. You can kind of see the, the blue marks going in there. And we are in a plane, you know, like I said, I would want to have more uh, points of contact from one end to the other uh, on the final. But right now, I just want to measure the heights again on both sides and see uh, if and how much more step scraping we need to do to get it in the right plane. So we're gonna pick this up, put it back over on the surface plate, do some more measuring, and uh, we'll bring you back once we uh, get that set up. So giving you an update, after that first pass round of uh, step scraping, um, we've got a little over 2,000 difference between the two sides. Now remember, uh, the, before we did the step scraping, we were at about 4,000 or 40 10,000. So, you know, I got about halfway there. That's not too bad. Uh, I was hoping to go a little bit farther than that, I won't lie, but uh, basically I see that I need to go another round of step scraping, pretty much just like what we did uh, on the previous one uh, to continue to bring this side down. So more grunt work. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you guys with a bunch of scraping. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna lay this thing out, um, probably do 16 passes again. Uh, put the straight edge in there till we get coverage from one side to the other and then come back over here and test it again. And what we're going after is we want to get both sides measuring the same. All right, guys, we're going to check this thing out. And in full disclosure, um, I did two more series of step scraping since the last time I showed a video. So the first time we after we went back, I was still a little over a thousandths out. 
uh, about well, it was about thousandths and two tenths, I think. And then I did a light uh, step scraping this time, and we're going to see where we're at. So uh, again, this is the side that was the low side, measured zero originally. So we're going to come in here and re-zero on top of this gauge block, and I'm just going to come in and out on it a couple of times. This whole setup is so finicky measuring to the ten thousandths. You know, I want to make sure I'm getting some repeatability, and I am. All right, I've got this where I can slide this around the plate without having to pick it up. Just less chance of uh, error there. And let's come in on this side. And we are at about three and a half tenths. About three tenths. About three tenths. So we've got this pretty darn close. Uh, I'm very happy with that. And we still got some scraping to do. I mean, I've got it scraped more or less in a plane. It's in a plane that's parallel to the table. But um, we do need to go in here and get better contact in there. I don't have the number of points per inch as I want. It's not bad right now, uh, but I do want to kind of improve that surface a little bit. And uh, we'll recheck this measurement later on. But as far as I am concerned, three ten thousandths of an inch from one end to the other is uh, is good. Now, another thing I want to check is I want to You know, we got a little bit of uh, variation from one side to the other, maybe half a tenth. So it looks like this side over on this side, maybe just a little bit higher in this direction, but pretty darn close. I mean, I can barely even see it on this. Uh, maybe, maybe a tenth. I don't even think it's a tenth. So, um, you know, Something to keep in mind while I'm scraping this I may want to try to scrape a little bit heavier on this side I'll check it on the other side as well to see if it's doing the same thing um, and but and also as I'm scraping this end still needs to come down three ten thousandths again uh, I think we're in tolerance like it is but uh, uh, It'd be nice if we could make it even better all right, so uh, that's kind of where we're at. And uh, we're gonna basically do the same thing to the other side. Well guys, I am running out of time. Um, I do wanna go in here and get this scraped in the rest of the way, but honestly, it's gonna probably be a couple of weeks before I can do that. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and kind of quit right here. Um, I am got a little bit of uh, surgery I gotta have next week, it's nothing major outpatient type stuff, but um, they're going to have me on some restrictions for several weeks, not be able to do any heavy lifting. So uh, I'm going to have to put this on the back burner for a little while until uh, we can get back into the shop. Uh, but I'm real happy where we're at. What's still left to do, like I said, we'll need to still kind of come in here and get this side completely scraped in. I'm probably going to hold off doing that and go ahead and start working on the other side over there. And uh, once we get it kind of in the same plane, then we'll come over and fine tune both sides and get them scraped in just like we like. Uh, you know, there's always the possibility that I may go a little bit too deep over there and have to come back to this side. I hate to spend a bunch of time getting this side perfect and then have to, to do some more work to it. So I'm just gonna wait to the end to kind of touch that up. This is probably, you know, a couple passes with the scraper and straight edge and just shortening up my stroke, fine tuning it, getting uh, those points per inch uh, tuned in there. No big deal. Two, three passes, we should be in good shape. Uh, the other side, uh, like we said, we, we've got a good four thousandths on this side and about two thousandths on this side that needs to drop down. That was measurements before we did all the scraping. I need to go check that out because we probably dropped this side down a little bit in the process and those measurements over there are gonna to need to be um, looked at again. But basically trying to get all four corners here, set at zero, come in here with the straight edge, make sure that this is in a plane, make sure that's in a plane. And as long as everything repeats, 
in theory, we should be on the same plane as the surface plate. So um, I know I had some questions on some pictures I posted on Facebook where people were having their, saying they were having a hard time wrapping their mind around how we were gonna get this way, you know, in the same plane as down here. So there you go, that's how we're gonna do it. Uh, so with that guys, uh, that is going to be a wrap. Uh, it's gonna, like I said, be a little while before we can get back to this, but uh, hopefully we'll get this thing knocked out. Uh, we got a big chunk of it done. So uh, I'm real happy with where we are on this. And uh, with that, we're gonna sign off. As always, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, leave me some comments. Um, and yeah, big thank you to my Patreon supporters, everybody that supports the site. Uh, you guys are awesome. Couldn't do all this stuff without you. And with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.